that relationship really led me to getting Nightmare on Elm Street and, um, you know, uh, several like movies of the week and things like that. TV shows and all this stuff. Like it all started and it really just, it happened quickly. It happened really quickly. I mean, things when you're young, things just, you know, if you're lucky. I was never the kind of person that was like leaving one job to go fly to the next one. It was always like six months, even a year between jobs. Unfortunately, I always felt like I was like never getting on that, you know, the train of like super success. Um, And so like once I had that TV series, Just the Ten of Us, you know, you just think, oh, something's going to happen. But it, I always felt like, oh, there's like a roadblock or, oh, I, something's in the way. Like I'm not, it's not flowing, you know, and, and I often would get very demoralized and yeah. just think like, okay, if things don't, by my 25th birthday, <laughs> if I don't have another part, I'm just going to, you know, do something else. I'll go to graduate school or something. And then I'd always like get something. And, and but Wes Craven, you know, meeting him, I, literally like almost every time I was about to throw in the towel and quit. I always got a call from Wes and it would be like, I'm thinking of doing Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 and they've asked me to write the script. Would you be interested? Yeah, Dream Warriors. I have an idea for you to be in it. And I was like, thank you, Wes. Thank you so much. And same thing happened with Wes Craven's new Nightmare. I was, I just had a baby and I couldn't get an audition to save my life. I remember going out for, it was like technician number three for... (laughs) You know, a, a TV series about, you know, things that didn't even have names. Like I finally told my agent, if the part doesn't have a name, I don't want to even go. 